China is battling a new and rapidly spreading respiratory virus. The number of people infected has tripled to more than two. We have a new name for the coronavirus. The World Health Organization has officially called it COVID-19. COVID-19. The, late, the latest UK case of coronavirus is the first to be contracted within the country rather than abroad. The man walked into a GP surgery in Surrey feeling unwell. Unwelcome but expected. The coronavirus has hit the UK. It's inside the British people a very simple instruction you must stay at home so back in april 2020 um we were faced with an unprecedented situation uh, we all went into lockdown um, and for the first time we couldn't get together as a group and that presented a challenge to us we're a very hands-on organization we like to get out into the community uh, and make a difference and um, when that lockdown happened, that stopped us getting together, it stopped us being able to get out and help people. Uh, and all of a sudden we're presented with a real challenge as to how we could fight this pandemic and, and help our community out. So when the pandemic first hit, I think our initial response as a community group is, well, how can we help? And I think we looked around and the biggest demand at the time was, if you remember, uh, getting food to vulnerable people who were having to self-isolate. The queues were at the supermarkets and plus people didn't have people to get food to them. So we thought, well, how can we help? Now, we don't want to double up on work that other people are doing. And we fast realised that people like Sean at Oceans and Brynner uh, from Volunteer Support Group, uh, they were out there, they were out there helping and getting food to people. So instead of setting up alongside them and, and doubling up on work, what we decided to do at first was support them. And we sat back, we gave money towards it, and we supported them in their endeavours. But it wasn't long until another problem reared its head. And what we noticed was a shortage of protection equipment, PPE, for NHS and care workers. And this must have had the biggest impact on our response to the pandemic. This is an intensive care unit where clinicians must wear the highest level of protective clothing if they're treating COVID-19 patients. Goggles, masks and long-sleeved gowns. But reports that some NHS trusts are running out of protective equipment has caused huge concern. Around about um, the end of April towards May, we started to see news reports of um, shortages of PPE, uh, masks. We were starting to see people posting on Facebook asking if people had um, uh, masks or shields or face shields for doctors and nurses. Um, people were trying to help each other out. Um, and we started to look at how we could help. We'd heard of reports of people using 3D printers to start creating um, face shields uh, and masks for doctors and nurses and we thought that that was something that we could get involved with um, being at home um, having people being furloughed something that we could do to start um, working together um, from our separate homes how can health workers deal with people when they're risking catching the disease themselves and putting themselves out of action and that's when we decided as a group we, we need to do something there and Richard, our vice chairman, looked into it and found that we could manufacture ourselves out of materials that we could find lying around, proper PPE that could do the trick, that could work, that could get health workers into work and supporting the country as they needed to do and we could support that effort and as a result Shield Tamworth was born and that's what we did. We got together the materials to build thousands of PPE, of face shields that helped health workers get to work. We, we looked online and we came across something called the Badger Shield, which was a very straightforward way of um, creating um, a, a shield for, for frontline workers. So we started looking about how we could um, get hold of the materials and our first barrier was that a lot of the materials were sold out perhaps other people had, had the same idea or um, shortages of shops were shut in, haberdasheries were closed. So we, we, we took the first step to turn to the, the community of Tamworth and of course the community of Tamworth did what it always does and it massively stepped up. 
Our first Facebook post that we put out absolutely broke our records for when we put the um, appeal out for equipment. Which I think it must have reached about 20, 30,000 people. Um, our posts usually reach a couple of thousand people at most. It just broke all records and people came from all over the town um, with um, fabric elastic, with foam strips, with acetate. Um, schools stepped in to help us um, laminate acetate sheets to make um, screens to build shields with. It was just an amazing thing to see the community being enabled and actually seeing that yes, we can in a hands-on capacity make a difference here and fight back against this virus. It was really enabling for, the, for us all to, to be part of that and to, to be able to take back some control after losing so much of our lives and so much control over the previous weeks. I think that's got a massive impact on the pandemic response because if you can imagine a nurse gets faced with somebody with COVID, they have to self-isolate for 10 days. That's a nurse out of action for 10 days. And what we could do was help protect that nurse and keep her in work and keep her supporting the country. And that knock-on effect around of all those nurses and healthcare workers and carers in work would have had the greatest impact on helping those first steps to the pandemic response in this country and so we're very proud to have helped there to have been able to support the community in that way. We were getting uh, materials dropped off to us daily uh, and very quickly it started to snowball um, well beyond um, our expectations. We had to set up um, members who were collecting materials and dropping them to people's homes, people that were then putting the shields together, people that were taking emails and um, requests people that were then collating all of the shields together, people that were driving them to doctors, to nurses, to hospitals, handling the social media so that we could talk to the community to keep getting people to be asking for shields if they need them, giving us materials if they need them. We had local businesses stepping up massively, um, giving us um, supplies. Um, it was just, it snowballed into something that we, we, we didn't really expect. Um, and from that um, came about the idea of um, shielding Tamworth. Now what you notice in the town is, when this sort of thing's happened, it's, it's unprecedented. And as a result, people are feeling quite down. They're isolated from their friends and family. They're not able to go about their life as it is. And we thought, well, is there a way that us in Tamworth, a round table, could bring and spread some joy, raise the spirits of the town? Um, <laughs> we're not sure how we could do that, but one thing that we've got, we've got a direct line to Santa, haven't we? Now, I realise this is the summer, and Santa's works at Christmas, but because we've got this direct line, we, we had a quick word with Santa and said, look, you know, you sometimes come to visit Tamworth in the uh, summer for the carnival. Could you come and visit us and raise the spirits of Tamworth? And Santa came along and Hawaiian Santa was born in his Hawaiian shirt. And what we did was we traveled around the town and we could also support the groups that were out there helping the pandemic as it was. So the Tamworth Volunteer Support Group who were collecting food for different groups of people who were vulnerable, self-isolated, we could collect the food for them and raise the spirits at the same time with our party on wheels around the town. And that's what we did. We got thousands of bags of food that we could donate and they were going straight to vulnerable people. It was amazing and we were really pleased that we could touch so many people in the town with what we could do, just a small group of us, what could we do together? As we moved through the summer, we then moved into um, providing food for food banks and people isolating. We realised that there was a real need for people to be able to get food supplies to their houses when they, when they were self-isolating, they had no family and friends, they couldn't get out. And we started to see that there was actually real hands-on issues going on through the town that we could get involved with. So we we got the Santa sleigh out and we um, we did summer Santa where we dressed Santa in a Hawaiian shirt, got him out in the streets uh, and once again we put that out to the community of Tamworth and once again the community responded in droves uh, and we collected thousands of cans of pasta, um, all manner of foods um, and we were able to hand those um, through to food banks that were able to put parcels together through the local council and through charities uh, and get free food deliveries out to people self-isolating who couldn't get to shops and people that were shielding elderly people, people with underlying health conditions. Um, and Once again 
the, the people of Tamworth, we got together and, and to protect our town. And from that, really, Operation Shield Tamworth rolled and we moved then into um, mobile phones for people that were stuck at home that didn't have a way of communicating with family and friends. We handed out mobile phones to vulnerable people. We put um, SIM cards in them. We got um, credit put on them so that they could make and receive calls. Um, and then we moved into assisting with schools and the problems around schools. Um, I think everybody saw the Marcus Rashford um, uh, post around um, a food hamper, which I believe was actually in a Tamworth school in, in, in the borough. Um, we responded, we got food out um, to, to, to pupils. Uh, and then we moved into uh, the Christmas period. It was nice to get the sleigh out at Christmas and bring Santa around to children. Um, you know, I've got a young child myself and it is heartbreaking that they, you know, couldn't go and see Santa this year and do the things that we all like to do. Um, so it was just to be able to bring that cheer to the children in Tamworth, to be able to drive the sleigh round and for Santa to be able to, to give the children a wave at Christmas. That was something extra special this year. One of the challenges facing the community as well was schools were closing. Now, people were learning from home and the teachers could support that, but one sticking point was technology. The, the children learning at home, a lot of them didn't have access to technology and their education was suffering as a result. Now, what could we do as a table? January Operation Shield Tamworth continued when we started to see the people, that the children once again were having to homeschool. Uh, and again, one of the big problems that was starting to come out was that people, you know, they didn't have the equipment at home. The schools couldn't provide everybody with laptops. Now, we do raise money and we've got money that we can use to buy laptops, that sort of thing. But laptops are expensive and we don't have huge amounts of money to help with that sort of thing. So we had to think outside the box a little. How can we help? But what we in Roundtable can do is through our skills as individuals, we can do something. And what we did was, if we could collect up laptops that people didn't want anymore, we could use our skills to get them into work in order and get them to people that needed them to help them with their education. And that's exactly what we did. Um, so once again, we turned to the community, to the people of Tamworth, uh, and we asked for second-hand laptops that we uh, could convert, put um, put Linux software onto them, update them uh, and hand them out to, to, to children in the community. We managed to get 65 laptops collected, refurbished and out to people that needed them. That was 65 children in Tamworth that were able to learn properly when previously their education had suffered and we're very proud of the fact that we've got people up and running. None of the things that we've done this year could have happened without the absolute wonderful response that we've had from the people of Tamworth. Um, every single person that's been involved, whether it's been handing a can over, whether it's been given an old laptop, um, whether it's been finding some acetate from your, from your, um, from your old school folder, um, Every little bit of help that everybody has, has, has come together with has attributed to an absolutely fantastic um, ability for this town to, to, to shield itself and to shield each other and to, to really, really dampen the effects of, of COVID, COVID on our communities. So thank you to everybody for what you've been able, what you've allowed us to be able to do.